Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new video capsule that is part of the ILWIC project. Uh, you might have seen other capsules regarding the handbook. In today's video capsule, Judith, uh, Raigal, and myself will present the video game we have created in these strategic partnerships and uh, will give you tips on how to use it in class. Our colleague Jordi Arnal from Canada Games has already told you how to download it and install it and start playing it in another video capsule. So today we will focus on the teaching potential of this resource. As you might have seen if you have installed the video game or if you have uh, seen Jordi's capsule, the video game takes place in a secondary school or in high school and presents different kinds of situations where students are asked to broker with other peers or adults. By, do, by putting the emphasis on these brokering activities, the video game has different aims, which are, first of all, to show language brokering as a common practice that takes place in many schools around the world, especially because sometimes children or young people feel they are different because they are doing this task. They are the, the, the different ones and they are not. There are many young people, many children around the world doing these tasks as part of their daily routine. So it's important to, um, to, to, to not to see this uh, practice as uncommon or rare. We don't mean by this that it should be done always. We will talk about this later on, but it is important to make them feel that they are not rare, they are not weird. It is common. Many children and young people do this around the world. We would also like to that the video game helps promoting a deeper understanding of what language brokering by young people usually entails, because sometimes we think it's just these young people going to mediate or interpret in a parent teacher meeting. But this sometimes means that he or she is not playing with her or his peers. So it's all it's already having an impact. Or maybe this means he or she is missing class. Or maybe this means he or she is knowing some information that shouldn't be known by himself uh, or herself. So it is important that uh, we, we, we think of what can entail uh, doing these language uh, brokering tasks. We would also like that the video game uh, uh, provides some situations to analyze and discuss, discuss with students from multiple perspectives, and that this becomes uh, some reflective practice exercise so that they can really uh, analyze the situations, think what they have would have done in those situations and discuss it with peers and with you as a teacher. Um, we would like that the video game uh, helps appreciate multilingualism and raise awareness of young people translating and interpreting in schools. And finally, we would like it to provide tools and strategies to young language brokers to express their feelings towards language brokering and take care of their emotional health. Because sometimes maybe they feel bad because they're doing this, or maybe they don't feel comfortable, but they don't know how to express this. So it's important that uh, the, the video game can also create a safe space for them to share their feelings. So this is a bit of uh, what we were thinking of uh, with this, uh, the main names of the video game, but Judith will now show you specific scenarios so you will see a more hands-on approach on how to use the video game in class. Thank you, Mireya. Now it's time to play. So let's share the screen and let's play. This is our video game. Uh, first of all, before we go to the scenario, I want to show you that we have a multilingual video game, as Mireya has said. And if we want to choose another language, we have to click on options. And here we have the option language and the video game is available in English, Spanish, Catalan, Italian and German. So let's choose English and let's start the video game. New game. As Mireille has just said, the video game takes place in a high school. And every time we play a, a scenario, we are a different character. So we can experience 
uh, different emotions and different situations. When we start the video game, we are already at school. And this is um, the main um, navigating tools we have. Here we have a little map where we can see where we are. And most important, we can see where the scenarios we can play at are. So we have this blue, blue, blue thing with the eye, and it means that there's a scenario here we can play. Then here we have the agenda. This is a tool that it's very useful because we can see all the days of the week. The video game uh, scenarios are organized from Monday to Friday. And with this agenda, we can uh, jump directly to the scenario we want to play. Now we will just uh, be here on Monday and we will play the first scenario we have, a parent-teacher meeting. Let's see what happens there. When we click on the task we want to play, uh, we jump directly to the place where this task takes place. And here, for example, we are next to the cafeteria of the high school. And what we first see, it's uh, an explanation, an introduction to the video game. In this case, uh, your mom does not speak English and today she has a meeting with your teacher. You have been asked to come along to translate whatever they say. Are you up to the task? So in this first scenario, we are going to deal with a parent-teacher conference where we, the student, we are this person here, have to broker. So we have to make sure that they are talking and that they are understanding. We are going to be in this situation and see what happens and see if we have to decide on how to do this or see if we are feeling uncomfortable and deal with our feelings. Whenever uh, we are in a situation, we always have the button next here so that we can, um, uh, that we can advance. And the scenario starts with the teacher um, saying thank you to, to our mom and to me because we are there today to talk about my progress. What we see directly after is that the student, so the player, uh, answers the teacher, the teacher question and she's not talking in English. So this is how in the video game we see multilingualism. We can see that the bubble here is in another language and whenever another language is used, we can also see the translation right there so that we can follow what is being said, but we can also see that um, more than one language is being used. In this case, the teacher is not understanding what the student is saying. Having heard the teacher that Saida is speaking another language, she needs to ask if her mother does not speak English. Then they decide that uh, Saida is going to be a translator for the conference for the conference today, and she is be, is asked she is asked to translate whatever they say. I will just go directly to the next uh, part of the game. Um, all the scenarios have always a dialogue part and they also have mini games. Usually they have at least two mini games. One of them is right before the player has to decide how to do something specific. And then there's always another uh, mini game right after. This is the first mini game we have in this scenario. And it is, um, as we will see, a mini game where the student has to guess the parts of the eye. Um, all the mini games we have are different. Uh, some of them are more, um, let's say, um, knowledge specific, knowledge related, and others are more uh, fun, if we can use this adjective. And in this case, we need to guess the parts of the eye. And it is very easy. The only thing we need to do is um, um, is move these uh, these names so that we can um, guess where the parts are. It is very uh, useful uh, that we always have in all the games a auto solve option in case we can't uh, solve a video game or we just want to move on because we are 
let's imagine that we are uh, working this scenario at class and we just want the students to move on to the dialogue and see what the specific uh, what the specific um, uh, question they have to solve there. So for now we will just auto solve. Yes, let's imagine we have just dragged all the little boxes and we have guessed everything and we move on. Every time we finish a mini game, we have a score depending on how many answers we have guessed correctly. Uh, apparently, I guessed none of them. And we also have a fun fact or a uh, interesting fact that it's related to the mini game we have, we have just played. In that case, we were guessing the parts of the eye. So now we have a did you know that telling us that our eyes can focus on 50 different objects every second. We just move on. And now we are inside the teacher's office and the, the parent teacher conference starts. Uh, now it's when the student starts brokering um, specifically. And the teacher asks the student, Saida, to uh, ask her mother if there is anything she wants to ask her. Saida translates this question to her mother. The, uh, Saida's mother, um, uh, sorry, Saida's mother um, answers. And then again, Saida is translating into English the answer. Again, we see that the teacher is telling Saida, please tell your mother that you are a hardworking, well-behaved, respectful, blah, blah, blah. So this dialogue continues. As we can see, I'll just move on so that we can see where, where this leads to. Every time the teacher is asking something, she's asking that to Saida, not to the mother, not to her mother. This is important because uh, after the dialogue, what we see is that this leads to Saida feeling uncomfortable in this situation. Teacher is not addressing her, sorry, the teacher is not addressing the mother who is the, the, the parent, but her. And this is feel, making her feel uncomfortable with the situation. There is where the question of the scenario starts, the, the talking point. And there is where the player has to choose an option. It is important to note that there are not correct or incorrect options, but all these um, ideas here are designed, are thought to make the students uh, think about the situations, to see uh, what, it is, what it is like to be this student, how this student can be feeling, this, this, this student that is brokering. So now um, Saida has three options. She's feeling uncomfortable with the situation and she has three options and she needs to decide how to deal with this parent uh, teacher conference where she is there, where she is. So she has uh, these, three, um, these three possibilities. Uh, she can ask the teacher not to ask her to translate for the parents again. So she can decide not to do this anymore. She can keep translating, but um, she can try to involve her mom in the conversation directly. Or the third option, she can keep translating, but tell the teacher direct, directly to um, include her mother so that she, is, she's, she feels better with the situation because then the mother is being addressed and not her. Um, what do you think, Mireya? What would you do if you were Saida? How would you feel? How do you think you would react? Well, it's difficult because I know Saida is a young person. She's a teenager. So I think it's, it's uh, good that, well, it's, it's uh, normal that she feels uncomfortable in this situation, but maybe it's difficult for her to tell the teacher why she feels uncomfortable, which is the third option. So maybe I would try the second option, which is like more subtle, more in, indirect way of involving the mother. Let's try this one, Judith. Okay, let's see. We click on that. And again, uh, the, the question that prompt that question, that uh, reaction from Saida appears again. 
So teacher asks, do you discuss your progress with your mother at home? And Saida says, let me ask my mom to talk about this. So she's trying, as we have decided, to uh, involve her mother and indirectly. And the meeting continues. This is the, the, the dialogue finishes there. And as I said before, right after the, the big question where the player is asked to solve a, a moment that is difficult for the broker, we have again a video game, sorry, a mini game. The difference, uh, this, this mini game is different from the other one because uh, right after the dialogue, the mini game we have leads to win a sticker. Uh, after each uh, scenario, we have one of these mini games and we can win every time a sticker so that we can complete a collection. Let's see what do we have to do to win this sticker. Um, please know that we are still at the, um, at the office, at the teacher office, and there is a poster there where it says Namaste. And we are asked, uh, when would you say namaste to someone? So let's see. What do you think, Mireya? What should we choose to win a sticker? What does namaste mean? Do we say namaste when we leave uh, our place, when we leave our home, when we are greeting someone? If you want, uh, if you want uh, people to let uh, uh, to leave us alone, or if we agree to what is being said. What do you think? What should we choose? Well, I really actually, want the sticker. I thought it meant thank you. So now I really don't know what namaste means. I always thought mm. it meant thank you. Mm, I don't know. Let's try when greeting them. Okay, let's try that one. When greeting them. Wow. Great. <laughs> we did well. Yes, Saida. <laughs> Saida tells us, yes, that's correct. You would say namaste to someone when greeting them. We click next and great, we got a sticker for our collection. Um, yes, so every time we finish a scenario, we will see this screen. And if we answer correctly, we get a sticker. So this is the, the scenario we wanted to show you. When we click on next, we are uh, again in the video game in the high school and we can keep navigating and playing. And of course, going to the agenda here and choosing um, the next scenario we want to play. I will stop sharing now. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Judith. Thank you very much for um, this detailed explanation of a scenario. I think uh, all of us know a bit more how to use the, the video game in, in class. So I would just want to add as a final, uh, as final thoughts that we would like to emphasize that the video game is mainly to talk about emotions, to see different situations of child language brokering, um, to see that it sometimes is a burden for the uh, young people and children who are always brokering for their peers, or that it mm, might become a burden if, if, if they need to do it very often. Uh, it is important for young people to say that they can say no sometimes, that they can say, okay, no, today I don't feel like translating today. Uh, this situation is more difficult than I had expected and I would like to stop. So it's, it's uh, the video game is really an opportunity to give tools to students that very often uh, are put in these situations and, and really don't know how to, how to, how to solve them without uh, without feeling uh, bad for other people. Um, so that is why all the options really are possible in most of the of the scenarios. There are just one or two scenarios when we would like to be like more prescriptive prescriptive, sorry, which are scenarios where, for example, a student is asked to go 
in an ambulance to accompany uh, another peer that has hurt himself and they have to go to the hospital. We really think this should be asked to a professional interpreter. And in fact, the video game also wants to make us reflect that sometimes there are professional options that we have to remember that exist professional options. There are professional uh, professional options that exist and that can um, uh, that we can rely on them in when we encounter uh, uh, communication barriers in in school settings. The, the video game also allows you to talk about multilingualism, multiculturalism, and it promotes this perception that multi, multilingualism is a good thing in, in our high schools, in European high schools, in our high schools around the world, really. And we would like you to remind we would like to remind you that you also have the handbook that provides like an, an overall perspective of child language brokering, young uh, language brokering, but also the teach the, um, the teacher's companion for the video game. And in the teacher's companion, you have complete descriptions of each of these scenarios with detail, uh, uh, with, with, with all the options the student have. And you also have uh, guidelines for the discussion. So for example, if you were playing this scenario that Judith was showing, you can, for example, ask your students, um, have, you, uh, have you experienced similar situations? Or what would you feel if you were in the in the situation of the of the student of Saira, uh, what uh, option have you chosen? So you can use really the, the scenario to discuss the situations. In certain in certain scenarios, we provide also references if you want to really um, do a more detailed analysis of, of the situation. So that is really the objective of the video game. We really hope it is useful for you, it, it becomes a useful tool in your classes. And please uh, just reach to us if you have any comments on how to improve it that we would really uh, would, li would like to listen to, to you. Thank you very much for your attention and now just enjoy the video game. <laughs>